wow. That's all I have to say is wow. So everybody who liked Fahrenheit 9-11, there is no reason in the world not to go see this. And maybe if enough people come, there'll be more screenings elsewhere. Maybe mm -hmm. they'll be available on tape, but Hopefully, everybody definitely. should know. But the thing is, once we know, how do we change government after that? Everybody knows about 9-11, and the sucker still won. Ah, 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 ah. After Watergate, Nixon did win again. Do we deserve this? Okay, so here we are back again. Now, what else did I want to talk to you about? God. So you'll be shooting in San Francisco? Yep. San Francisco, San Francisco and Oakland, actually. There's one piece that has to be shot in Oakland, unfortunately. <laughs> Don't say well, that. Well, sorry. <laughs> you know. I wanted it to be the San Francisco trilogy, but there's some things I couldn't get. Yes, but sometimes you have to leave San Francisco to come back yeah, again. Exactly. I mean, that's part of being in San Francisco, crossing yeah. bridges, coming back. Exactly, Bay Area. Except I don't, because I get nosebleeds when I cross bridges. Really? <sighs> it's a whole, like, anxiety thing. Oh, it's good you have a good city to stay in then. <laughs> this is a good place. Yeah, good place to get stuck. Yeah. You know, this great little prison here. Your beginnings was interesting to me because, uh, okay, you started in Detroit. You eventually found out, decided you wanted to be a filmmaker, mm -hmm. but you did not study film. Nope. You studied photography. Mm -hmm. That's most of my background, actually. Why was that? Why did you do that? Um, at the time, there wasn't really a digital, um, digital wasn't around, uh, wasn't uh, around, and I, most of my friends were taking theory classes and aesthetics and things along that lines, and I wanted to kind of know about film emulsions and know how to shoot. So you wanted more the, the, the physics of it, the, the physics physicality. Of it. Yeah, exactly, learn mm -hmm. how to light, things along that lines. So We have a phone call. Hello, are you out there? Did you say we had a call? Rod? Yes. Caller, hello. I'm not hearing anybody. Well, if the caller does come back, we can always let him break in. I know. Okay. But thank you for my, let me just remind everybody too that with the phone call phone number. There it is. Six two one four four seven two. Give us a call if you have any questions for uh, Jim, because you're a very interesting person. Thank you. So, how did you learn about how to be a filmmaker once you decided to be a filmmaker? Um, or a digital maker. Digital maker. I love digital technology. I just love the accessibility, the ease, that kind of stuff. And um, you, you don't mind the price one has to pay in terms of the quality of the image, or is there a price to pay at all? I think, I think, I think in looking at, I think in looking at being taken seriously, I think that most people look, still look down upon digital video. Unfortunately, um, that's an unfortunate thing because I think there's great stories to be told. And oh, hello, caller. Are Can you, you hear me now? Yes, hello. <laughs> Sorry about the technical problem a moment ago. We don't get enough phone calls to really get into it, but here we are. Hi. That's quite all right. And what's your name? Lisa. Hello, Lisa. Hi. I want to ask Jim, um, once you're done with the trilogy, do you plan on making a feature-length film? And if so, will you try to pursue that in San Francisco as well? What with the difficulties with the Film Commission and so forth? Film Commission. Actually, um... Actually, I'm looking to, and that's, I mean, the difficulties in shooting San Francisco is there's a lot of talented people and so on, but there's a lot more, they have, there's a lot more expectations. And most of the, the feature-length screenplays that I actually have are Detroit-based, so I'll probably be shooting, uh, shooting in Detroit. Oh, but you said, but you said making filmmaking in San Francisco, it says right there on the website, which, by the way, is not A-N-E <laughs> dot com, it's A-N-E, A-N-I pick. Mm hmm dot com pardon me yeah I'll, uh, you know I'll still be living here and I'll still try to pull as much Northern California uh, talent as possible but for me it's like the stories that I have that the longer features are actually more c personal for me yeah so I feel like they have to be shot in Detroit otherwise I would sh definitely shoot them here well definitely. by the time you finished your first feature film you will have lived here longer and you might have feature stories no, to tell about here later on. No, I definitely do. I so. definitely have some, but I don't necessarily, th in looking at the San Francisco stories that I have, uh, mm -hmm. I think that... Um, They're I still just, shorts. No, actually, I have longer screenplays, but I don't necessarily think that I'd be able to afford to be able to do that here, unfortunately. Because the city is not kind to filmmakers? No, I think it's just the level of story. I think that the in looking at production values and things along that lines, I just don't think I could do justice to them. You know, my first my first film initially, the first screenplay that I wrote was supposed to be more of a genre piece, but when I took a look at the screenplay, I decided that number one was better because I could afford to do it. I could do it right. And I right. think that that's 
one of the things that I've seen in a number of things short films is that they're they're going for genres. Um, personally, in my opinion, they're they're kind of going for genre work and things along that lines, and and they don't necessarily have the budgets to do that. Mm -hmm. And I find that that the work suffers, and you're not necessarily taken seriously. So it's kind of you know while it is genre work, I think that's kind of a double-edged sword to a certain extent. Okay, does so. that help you at all, Lisa? Was that good for you? It was good for me. Thank you so much for calling. All right, then. So you're going to leave us to make your feature, come back, and then the next feature will be here because you'll be a big, fat, famous yeah, person. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But you were explaining to me before about your filmmaking background and where mm. you learned it because you did not go to school for it, and that's okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I actually... Um, most of the stuff was kind of just through reading books, uh, reading books and attending just hundreds and upon hundreds of films. Did you not also go to L.A., try to get in the biz, and work on other students' films, even though you were not a student at the time? Yes. I did production assistant work for maybe two or three different um, USC um, film school. Right. I did some work uh, on three or four, actually, different um, USC projects. But I hear you have a bad taste in your mouth from your experience in L.A. Yeah, you know, for me, it's 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 because it's an industry and it's kind of taken for granted, and people are people are incredibly jaded, and it's just harder to get things done. You have more talent. I mean, everyone's there, but but I think that it's harder to get things done because you're still dealing with expectations. You're still dealing with um, the fame, things along that lines, and I think that that's kind of a, a, a kind of a double-edged sword as well. We go, well. D d d d So when you came back up here, whatever made you come to San Francisco after feeling finished with L.A.? Um, How did you find this place? I actually, it's just a fluke. I, I, I kind of, uh, I, I had gone back to Michigan and had done, worked on some films back in Detroit. And, uh, See, I by then you were already experienced. So you could work on other people's films. Yeah, I could work on other people's So, And I worked on films before that, but they were mostly student projects. Right. So I got to work on, on a couple things in Detroit. And... Uh, and I, I kind of stepped away from it and actually was, was pursuing a, a photojournalism degree. I wanted to go for a photojournalism and finish off my Something my degree to fall back on. To fall back on, because I had a background in, you know, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think more so than filmmaking. That's, yeah, well, filmmaking it's a little is bit better. The, yes. A little bit better. So I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not the best choice. Business degree would probably well, you be know, better. The, uh, <laughs> the Pulitzer went to a local woman for photojournalism this year. There you go. So, yeah. just yeah. a chronicle woman, just a chronicle woman. Yeah. So, we're going to have to close up now. Okay. okay. Let me tell you what we're closing with. It's not easy to find a fun, silly movie at a film festival. Mm -hmm. This is the world's opportunity to um, say whatever's bad all over the world, and it's kind of down. But I found one. Mm -hmm. It's called Phil the Alien from Canada. So this was just so much fun. I just want you guys to enjoy Phil the Alien from Canada, which will be in the San Francisco International Film Festival. See you in a couple of weeks. And thank you so much, Jim Breen. It was great. Thank you. More movies, more movies. So.